two people may love each other a lot, but it doesn't mean they can live together. The other thing that I think people always worry about and it's children uh, of divorce have troubled marriages. We grew up thinking or imagining that our parents are superheroes yeah. and they're not. Hi, I'm Malini and welcome to another episode of The Girl Tribe. Everyone, welcome back to the Girl Tribe. I'm so happy that today I'm sitting on my pink sofa with Dia Mirza, who is an actress, a social activist, and a major environmentalist. And today you're going to find another side of her that I'm so happy that she's sharing with me, hopefully for the first time. Actually, it is. Yeah, and uh, it's really strange to hear you say Dia Mirza. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like very formal and serious, yeah. but. On that note, I'm going to tell everyone a couple of things that I found out about you, which I thought were really sweet. I didn't know you were half German, by the way. You didn't? No. Ah. Anyway, the other thing is that you <laughs> are an avid painter, which I think I knew a little bit about. And my favorite thing is that you have a ba baby rhinoceros named after you now. Yeah. That is adorable. This is a great first child to have. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very grateful. Um, when I asked you if we can talk about a few things... Um, that are quite personal. I wasn't sure what you would say. So of course, I <coughs> sent you this long list because, you know, I mean, I think especially in the world of celebrity, everyone has become so cautious about what they talk about and you have to be so careful because everyone twists everything you say and I'm sure you've experienced that yeah. too. There's so many things that are untapped and mm -hmm. I think the thing that we're going to talk today um, about divorce and being uh, children of divorced families is something that nobody really talks about. I find yeah. that really strange, Malini, because... Um, these facts have, I mean, since I started working in the industry, I've always been very open about the fact that uh, my biological father was German, my stepfather was Muslim, um, I've taken on his surname. I never withheld my truth. Mm. But for some reason, no one ever cared to explore this facet of my life mm. or ask me any questions about it. Because I think there's more of an awkwardness for the people who discover your truth than there is for you yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So I really kind of want to start at the beginning with this sure. because I think it's important for people to understand. So sure. how old were you when your parents divorced? I was uh, four when they, uh, four and a half when they informed me that they were going to separate. How did they say it? Ha, huh, so that's actually a very important one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so in in my mind, in, in, in the child's mind, uh, my my fa family, my parents were ideal. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my setup was ideal. It was perfect. I think I may have seen my parents fight on very few occasions, maybe once or twice. I saw one really bad fight. But otherwise, I was never really exposed to the fights. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the first thing that I was startled about was their desire to separate. Uh, I remember distinctly my mother saying something to me that I will never forget. And I think it was a very early lesson in honesty. Uh, she said, you know, two people may love each other a lot, but it doesn't mean they can live together. Mm. I love your father a lot. He loves me a lot, but we can't live with each other. Mm. Because when we live with each other, we make each other unhappy. And the truth is that I did not fully understand what they were saying, mm. but I respected it because it was the truth. But so, so what happens? Like, so you, they tell you that, okay, now we're separating and then suddenly you have what, two houses, no, you, you have, have two rooms? two different homes. So the court had basically given my father the weekends and my mother the weekdays. I was more attached to my father right. at that age. Mm. He was my hero. Mm. In fact, um, in Lagera Homunna Bhai, when we, I was doing the scene with uh, Jimmy Shergill, where I speak about how my father has lied to me and how disappointed I am by that lie, I say, he is my hero. And that line came because I always perceived my father as a hero. Mm -hmm. I was very, very attached to him. So my time with him was precious. And I was most upset that... Uh, somebody else had decided how much time I would get to spend with him. Right. I would wait for the weekend to go off to spend time with my father. What really created a big shift was when both of them decided to remarry. And they both married very quickly. And did they talk to you about it? They said this is happening? Yes, they did. They did. And uh, that was crazy mm -hmm. because um, I remember sports day, one sports day, I had two sets of parents attend. Mm. I think it's just the pure 
the pressure of your peers judging you mm. or the thought that people may be judging you that but makes you feel a, so uncomfortable and the thing as is a like, child. As a child, you know, you feel like you've grown up knowing this is my family unit. You know, this is my mom, this is my dad, this is how it's supposed to be. So emotionally at that young age, like what did you feel? It was very confusing in the beginning. But um, I think I just... Because of the kind of people both my parents remarried and, and the kind of human beings they both were. Like my, my I, I hate calling him my stepfather, but I do it so that people, people don't get yeah. confused. Um, but my stepfather was an amazing, amazing human being. It, they both, my, my father, my stepfather and my mother consciously decided not to have another child because they didn't want to, what they believe traumatized me mm. any further. Mm. Uh, because also I moved into a joint family. The atmosphere, it was totally different. Imagine moving out of a mm. half European Indian home mm. to a Muslim home. But it was a very liberal home. There were rules, but they weren't rules that were kind of rooted in religion or culture. They were rules for character. Right. So, so what happens with, you know, when you have this new relationship, suddenly you're supposed to form and it's not like a friendship or not like a new uncle it or something friendship. you're meeting. It so was you, friendship. So how do you build that? I Is, think the first thing that mm. um, uh, my, my stepfather made very clear to me was that he would, he would never take the place of my father mm. and that he was not my father. Mm. He was my friend and he would only be my father the day I chose for him to be my father. Yeah. So you, you talked about your relationship with your stepfather. What about with your stepmother? I didn't really get much time with her mm. because um, uh, it was a very, very difficult marriage uh, in, mm. in, in the sense that her family was against my father marrying her. So they had to kind of go away. Mm. The big, big shock was that suddenly one day my father disappeared. He didn't want anybody to find out where he was with her because they were kind of, they'd kind of run away. Oh. I remember this very short phase when my father had taken this really quaint home in the outskirts of Hyderabad. And uh, my stepmother showed up one day to pick me up, to take me to him. And uh, I was with them for 15 days and it was the most magical 15 days because she was pregnant. And uh, she was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I loved her. They were both very, very good with each other. And I think I was just really happy to see my father happy with her, with my, my stepmother. And she was pregnant, so it was wonderful. So then what was that like? Because then you had a, a stepbrother or a sister? Um, she actually had my stepbrother after my father passed away. So I was nine when my father passed away. And it was crazy because I hadn't met him in a while. Mm. And I didn't, I wasn't a part of the burial process or anything. So I actually didn't see, there was no closure there. Mm. Uh, none whatsoever. And I was devastated. And I'll never forget a conversation my stepfather had with me after my father passed away. Uh, he said, uh, I had promised your father never to take his place. But now that he's no more, I want you to know that you have a father. Mm. I think Mali just makes you um, more empathetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you just discover that your parents are human. Mm. Uh, they're fallible. They are flawed. And it's an extraordinary discovery. Because I think as children, we grew up thinking or imagining that our parents are superheroes. Yeah, yeah. And they're not. Mm. You know, a lot of people say stupid things like, your childhood was robbed. Mm. Far from it. Mm. The thing is that I'm sure, and I'm sure a lot of people who are watching in the girl tribe, and women especially who may be, in unhappy relationships, whatever, whatever reason, and feel like, and I've seen this happen, and I'll be honest with you, it's happened with my I've parents. I've seen it as where well. Where they feel like, I cannot leave because of the children. Mm. And I mean, and I probably haven't said this out loud before, but looking back, I kind of wish my parents had separated because 
they would not have been so angry with each other all the time. And that's not the home you go home to constantly, you know? And you know, the other thing that I think people always worry about, and it's like, I don't know if it's true or false, is that children uh, of divorce have troubled marriages or relationships. I'm sure you've heard this, right? Like, is this, so what, what is your take on that? Did it have I think no- big children who are in, who, are, who, who live with parents who can't stand each other and make each other's lives miserable would have a bigger problem understanding what yeah. a they real don't relationship love. Yeah. is and yeah. what real love is. Yeah. It's, you know, I find it very fascinating that I think most people spend most of their lives uh, protecting themselves from experiencing mm-hmm. things for what they truly are. I always feel you like you can go yeah. terribly wrong in a very protected environment yeah, yeah. as well, or in you know I know some really messed up people mm-hmm. who are who were brought up in what are called ideal family situations. Yeah. So what you know for all the parents that are watching and all the kids who um, ha- are in that place right now, what is your you know piece of advice that you want to give them? It's important as parents to recognize the fact that yes. Your children are important and they mean the world to you and their happiness must mean the world to you. But that can't come at the cost of your own happiness. Because at the end of the day, you can never really be happy or give happiness if you're not happy yourself. Mm. So now I'm going to ask you to make a pledge for me and add it to my pledge wall so that I can keep it there and it shall inspire me. I'm so excited about this. Thank you. Um, I think I'm going to try and find a pledge that is connected to all of what we discussed today. Mm. My pledge is be open to life. It's beautiful. All experiences are a lesson. <laughs> Gotta sign that for me. Yay! Yeah. I, I need to keep reminding myself about this. I'll send you a picture. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to please pin this up on my Girl Tribe Wall of Fame. I will. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It has been so eye-opening and so lovely speaking to you about all these things. And I know the Girl Tribe has learned a lot today. And I'm sure the love you got already is just going to be tripled, quadrupled once they hear this conversation. Do you have a message for the girls in the tribe? Stick together. Sisterhood for the win. Yes. And stay tuned because coming up is an absolutely incredible story about a girl warrior. So see you there. Today, I want to share with you the story of a fearless woman who has not only risen from the ashes, but has emerged stronger than ever, like a true warrior, Salhoni Sinha. Her story is that of lakhs of other Indian women, and that's why I want to make sure it's heard. Saloni was born in a very liberal household where her parents always encouraged her to follow her dreams and be an independent woman. She completed her master's in linguistics from Jawaharlal Nehru University. Life was perfect until everything came crashing down. In 2005, her mother suffered from a brain stroke that left her in a vegetative state. Saloni was determined to dedicate her entire life to stand by her mother and take care of her. However, it was her mom's dream to see Saloni get married and start her own family, just like her two elder sisters. So, in 2009, Saloni got married to a man she met through her family circles and moved to Noida with him. It was merely two months into the marriage when Saloni realized she had married her abuser. She was forbidden from talking to her own parents. The emotional abuse grew more intense. And then the physical abuse began. Saloni's husband would beat her whenever she refused to give in to his demands. The only thing that kept her spirit alive was the support from her friends, sisters, and her brother-in-law. In 2013, life threw another curveball at Saloni when her mother passed away from a second brain stroke. Isolated and disheartened, Saloni suffered from acute depression. But she pulled through, applied for her PhD, and became a frequent visitor to NGOs and orphanages, occupying herself with helping others. However, her recovery was short-lived when one day Saloni's husband attempted to strangle her to death. This time, enough was enough. 
Saloni knew she had to fight back and not be the victim anymore. She pushed him away and screamed at the top of her voice to get him to stop attacking her. She walked out of that house and never looked back. This incident was extremely traumatizing for her, not helped by the fact that she couldn't even file a police complaint as she didn't have enough money to invest in the case. Her self-esteem was destroyed. She experienced hallucinations and spent months of sleepless nights. She decided to seek therapy and rebuild herself emotionally and financially. She threw herself headfirst into her profession of teaching, training and research and cleared off all her debts so that she could file for a divorce without asking for a settlement. Her husband contested the divorce and delayed the proceedings for years. But when Saloni finally told her in-laws that she would file a criminal case against him, they finally backed down. Today, after years of battle and hardships, Saloni is leading a life filled with pride, dignity and respect. She is proudly associated as a casual translator for the Prime Minister's speeches. She has also won the Youth Icon Award this year for her role in Theatre for Change and Theatre for Society by the acclaimed Asmita Theatre Group. Saloni, you are the epitome of immense strength and courage and are an inspiration to the countless silent victims who may question their ability to stand up for themselves. Here is a message from a very special friend of mine who feels the same way. Hi Saloni, I heard your story from Miss Malini and I just want to say uh, you know, so much uh, respect for you, for everything you've been through. I'm sure it was really hard, but uh, just you should know that it is so inspiring for so many women, for all of us to hear uh, your story, your journey and to learn of your strength. So more power to you and keep shining. Thank you, Saloni, for sharing your story. It's so inspiring. And I think a lot of the girls in the tribe, after listening to you, are gonna feel like they can overcome anything in their lives too. So I'm gonna add you now to my Girl Tribe Wall of Fame. And that's all for today's episode of The Girl Tribe. Please hit like, share, love, post a big old giant heart in the comments, and keep coming back for more. Also, I'm starting a new thread on Malini's Girl Tribe with the question, are marriage and kids really such a hurdle to your career? How many of us have been asked about our plans for marriage ad nauseum? Come join the conversation on Malini's Girl Tribe on Facebook. I'll see you guys next week. Till then, remember, let your vibe attract your tribe.